Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. He woke us up this morning to see another Lord's day. We thankful for that because there's going to be a time and there's going to be a day where we are not going to be able to wake up. And I know what it's going to be called. And there are amazing people all over the world we interviewed that is not waking up this morning. It's especially losing loved ones. I'm not going to keep you long. I'm going to preach. I suppose we've been doing a series on anger. There were different type of anger and burdens and things like that, but I put that aside for a week. I decided to switch up my sermon this morning, and I just God put this on my heart this morning. And uh, I'm gonna preach out of Hebrews chapter 12, and it's a good story that I preached this sermon many times because the story retained to me of what I've went through, and that when I accomplished out of this, it is out of Hebrews chapter 12, uh, and I want to read verses one through two. And it reads like this, uh, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a, a great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensures us, and let us run the endurance, the race that is set before us. Verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who is for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross, uh, despising the shame, and has sat at the right hand of the throne of God. And my sermon is going to come out of verse number one, uh, and it's, uh, it has something to do with running the race and finish. My topic is going to be out of that is, uh, sprint your way to fate. Sprint your way to fate. Uh, what I'm preaching this sermon is, before I go into the sermon, I have a story to tell. When I was in high school, uh, I played football. October 9th, 1994. I broke my leg, my right leg. So I broke both my legs. That's why I can preach these sermons, because I have been through a lot. And that's why I'm going to preach Bear the Burdens next week, part of the series on how to deal with anger. And that's part of Bearing the Burden, Bearing our neighbor's Burden. That has a lot to do with dealing with anger and dealing with what you went through. And then this sermon is get is also kind of blends in of spreading your way to faith of everything that I went through and the folks that have done wrong. You can bait it. You can bait it. God will bait it get you through by spreading your way to faith. His faith will make a way out of the way. The point I'm saying is, I broke both legs, June 23rd, 2003, left leg. That one was worse, a compound fracture, two places. Got a giant pin put in it. Nobody would never know it. Broke my right leg, 1994, October 9th. My brother, Reggie Ben Thomas can tell you that. He, he's the only one to see me break both my legs. That's my brother. He's like a blood brother to me. That's my best friend. He didn't see me break... That he, he was on the football team in practice October 9th, 1994, East Mac High School. I was 17 years old. He seen me break my other leg, June 23rd, 2003, Children's Climb YMCA, Uptown Charlotte. Broke that in two places. We were playing basketball. Got under, I stayed under cutting me. But my point I'm saying is, October 9th, 1994. When I got hurt, broke my leg. That was my senior year in high school. I, the doctors told me that I wasn't going to be able to run track. Philippians 4.13 tells you, man can tell you what you can't do, but you can do all things. Do Christ will give you strength. It ain't what man say. It's what God say. Read your Bible. It's in Philippians 4.13. It's in your Bible unless you tore it out. I haven't gotten to the sermon yet, but I'm just telling my story before I go into the sermon so folks can be able to understand the sermon. Sprinting your way to faith. Doctors told me I wasn't going to be able to run track. I had tears come down my face. But guess what? I didn't throw in the towel. I was able, I was able to overcome that. It was mental for one. People try to, people, I had people that encouraged me, and I had people that try to discourage me. So what I did, I worked harder. I rehabbed. I rehabbed. 
then when my leg was strong enough to be able to run, I was baited to run this race by by uh, by rehabbing, and that was my senior. And plus, I I was one to run my second. I knew I'm gonna be able to run track again at at, at East Met. So I worked hard. Well, I was I wasn't listening to the doctors or nobody else. So they told my leg wasn't gonna heal up. It was gonna heal up. Now, with that being said. I'm about to go into the sermon now before I get to the final point of my testimony of that. Point number one. The great clouds of witness is composed of the people described. Therefore, faithfulness is a consistent encouragement to us. Meaning is that we do not need to allow our struggles to hinder our fate. It means because we, we, we all have struggles. And we all, and that's mostly and physically. We all have different type of struggles, different type of scars, but we cannot let that allow. We cannot let that allow uh, this this a bond of a, this a bond of what God has for us. Meaning is that we got to learn to run this race. When we wake up, that we born get ready to run a race. Uh, when we come out the womb, we and we have been taught that because we're going with the older we get, we're going to go through trials. But trials, a testimony, there's no testimony without test. Testimony will lead us, and, and it will lead us. Well, everybody has a testimony if they know how to run the race. But you got to know how to run the right race because if you don't run the right race, guess what? You're gonna fall off the track, and you're gonna fall and get disqualified. You gonna get disqualified in life. Meaning is that we got to know how to. And when your te your your testimony, people don't realize testimony is strong. You don't have to do stuff for people physically, but uh, just words in general and, and this test people, so your testimony could be a blessing to somebody else. Why? Because it could encourage others. When I broke my leg, October 9th, 1994, doctors told me I wasn't going to be able to run. Six months later, I'm going to get to that at the end of the sermon. Uh, my, point, my second point is that the Christian life involves hard work, meaning that it requires it requires us to give, it, to, it requires us to give up whatever and dangers our relationship with God to run patiently. We got to be patient in the midst of our trials and tribulations. Because if we don't be patient, that means we're not allowing God to, to, to do His will and His work. Because God put things, God put things in our life, allowed things to happen in our life to get our attention. Just like He did Jonah. When Jonah, when that fish has been in the, uh, and then that fifth day to thirty days, three nights, and he uh, and, then, and he didn't have nowhere to run, and God uh, and, and so he had to sit there and be and he had to be patient. He had to sit there and he and then humble him. A lot of things will happen in our life that will humble us, even we don't think a lot. A lot of us don't want to take God seriously, which is sad because we are trying to wait till when when things hit us in a slap in the face and we want to cry God all of a sudden. Just like this this pandemic, it altered everybody's life. It's a life changer. It changed everybody's life. When this pandemic came over here at the end of 2019, it had killed millions of people all over, all over the globe, and especially in the United States. And the Christian life is involved in the hard work. I mean, meaning that we got to learn to run this race. And when we live in faith, we must keep our eyes on Christ. Once we run this race, and we and we will stumble, and we will look away from. And if we don't run, this, uh, keep our eyes on the prize, and, and we, that means we will stumble and look away from God. As we should be running for Christ, not ourselves, because it's not about us. It's about Jesus. Because when it's about Jesus, Jesus did not think he thought he didn't talk about us when he died on the cross. He put self aside by giving his life to think about us. Meaning is that once we stare ourselves. At the circumstances, once we learn to stand ourselves in the circumstances, we can't see at the end of the tunnel, but we got to believe it is always light at the end of the tunnel. Because we, at first, we got to learn to run this race. We got to learn, and we have, and then we should be running for Christ, not ourselves. We must always keep Him in the sight of all times. And my last point is that when we face hardship and discouragement, it is easy to lose sight of the big picture because we can't see the picture, but we got to believe the picture. It's always a purpose behind everything we go through in this life. God had a purpose for me. When I broke my leg, it broke both my legs. October 9th, 2000, 1994, June 23rd, 
2003, and I still got a big giant pin in my in my left leg, and I, I I'm not really gonna experience that. But my final point is, what I'm saying is that we got because God put us here to be a testimony to others. We we, we are going we, 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 as we, in the day it is a circumstance there we have to experience suffering and and the training in order to train. You gotta crawl up before you walk. You gotta drink milk, baby milk first before. And the Christian maturity is developing our patience, and it makes our uh, final victory sweet. Pa patience means run with a purpose, run with perspective. We must run the race in endurance if we plan to finish well. Therefore, the key to persistence and patience is that the key is to is and do and have the key to the purpose is protective. Consider these three things will help us in the race. Number one, consider them. Since a great cloud of witness has has gave us, we must be serious about the finishing well. Second, consider ourselves. It is now our turn to run the race to which for the pitfalls we must lay aside every event that would prevent us from finishing well. And last, consider Christ. Christ ran his own race and endured hardship by dying on the cross and reward. He rewarded us by giving his life for us. For us to make a way to learn to teach us how to run the race. My final what I'm saying is that my last point is that I could unrelate to that because when the doctors told me I wasn't obeying to run. October, May 3rd. The same folks, the day of the track, our conference meet over at Providence High School, they told me I was, I was going to finish last place like I did in the conference day, my 11th grade year. And then I broke my leg on top of that football season my senior year. Six months before, went to the doctors, man himself, told me I was going to be there run. But guess what? Six months later, May 3rd, I made, not only did I was ready to run track, I, I finished, I, we finished second in the mile relay. And which that's been said, I was named, I was one of the eight people at East Mac High School, one of the 11 people at East Mac High School, 11 of our track runners, and one of the eight seniors with the two juniors and the one sophomore to was named to the all conference to the all Southwestern 4A conference. Amen. To the all to the all league track team. And we and we went to the regionals. And we were third in the state. And we was regional champions. And we were second and, and I was second in the mile relay. It doesn't get better than that. Yes, I wish we could have won the state to win it all the state championship. But what Charlotte did it. But point I'm saying is we was a testimony. I, we was a testimony to set the example. For the sophomore class that was sophomores and then then they became seniors two years later after I, two years I was gone. Our testimony was able to set the seed for them to win the whole East Met to win their first and our only state their our only state championship two years after I graduated high school, after we finished third my senior year. In track, when we almost won, he was regional champion, and I was named to the all conference track team. Six months after the doctors told me I was going to ready to run track, God, when 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 man tell you what you can't do, God, what you can do all things, and that's in Philippians four thirteen. Don't listen to the outsiders. Stay focused. Run the race. Stay in your lanes. If you stay in your lanes, yeah, you might fall and trip up, but you got to get back up and keep moving. You got to keep on pressing for the high call. Then you got to, when you look high, the more praises go up. The blessings will come down. And you even do the mix. I can relate to that because I done been through some stuff. I was, I done been through homeless for a day. I was, went through, I done went through separation, the divorce of a marriage. I done went through Lost job unemployment. I done went through broke both my legs. I done been robbed before. I done been through it all. I done been I done, I, done, I can relate to this stuff. That's why, but I didn't let that stop me from spreading my way to faith because I stayed in my lanes. I kept running this race even when I couldn't see it, but I believed in it. And that's what I want you to do. If I can run this race, 
And you can too. And my, I want my testimony to be a testimony to someone else because we are here to bear each other's burdens. And that's what I'm going to preach next week. Bear each other's burdens. We got to encourage one another, not discourage one another. They tried to discourage me in my 11th grade year in high school. In my 12th grade year, when I was running that same conference meet, when I ran it in my 11th grade year, and I didn't do well. But I made up for it by training hard. And I didn't listen to the outsiders. I kept doing what I did. And then when I was named to the all conference lead track team, and they announced it on the intercom. The 11 track, uh, East Mac track runners that on the track team that made it. And, and, and I was eight, uh, uh, eight of our 11, eight, eight, I was eight, eight of seniors that made it. And I was one of the eight seniors. And, and the other two were juniors and one sophomore. I really made a really name on the intercom. I went to the same folks that said that told me what I couldn't do. But I did it. But I did. I, did, I told them and they couldn't say nothing. That's why I say people are going to hate what you do. They hate Jesus. And they told they're going to hate what you do. People hate success because they never accomplish what you accomplish. And it's always someone that's going to go through more than what you're going through. Someone else's testimony uh, it can be your testimony and you, your testimony could be someone else's. And there's someone here today. I want this to be a testimony to you. And someone here today is trying to find their way and spread their way to faith. How can you do that? By the five steps of salvation. And five steps is not just by saying you save and talking to a radio or fan called God. There's the step you got to do, and that's in the Bible, and it's in the scripture, and it's not what man say or how you get saved, it is scripture, and it's five steps, and that's in the Bible, in Ephesians 4, 4, 5, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, the one Lord's church that God established, and that baptism is a dipping, and what is the five steps? Five steps is you got to first hear the word, the hear the word, what that means is hearing the word is that you got to hear the word, that that is Romans 10, 17. And then two, that number two, you got to believe the gospel. That is Mark 16, 16, Hebrews 11, 16. And then three, repent of your sins. Acts 2, 38, Acts, and that's seven. And then Acts 17 and 30. And then from a four, you got to confess, ask God for forgiveness of all your sins. That's Matthew 10, 32. And then last but not least, you got to learn to be baptized. You got to be baptized. Baptizing is a tip. You got to be baptized into the Lord's church, the church, church that he established. Don't wait. You can't. It's not about being baptized once a quarter. You be baptized on the spot. Why has that been said? That's scripture because you don't know when is your time. And that's man-made creeds when they tell you when you get baptized, you got to wait. To be baptized on a certain day, no, you better when you baptize on the spot because you don't know when you're delayed during your last day. And also, and you got to, and once you learn those five steps, you hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized, then you will learn to live faithfully unto death. There's, then once you do that, you will learn how to run the different races and you will learn how to sprint your way into faith and you will know how to be a testimony to someone else. I was a test living, I can relate to that. They told me October 9th that at the doctor. It was 1994 when I was at the hospital when they was putting a cast on my leg that I was going to be able to run track, but I was able to run. I was able to finish the race on May 3rd on 1995. Six months later when I was named to the all-conference track team, the one of the 11 East Mac track members that was on the track team that made it in eight, in eight seniors with the two juniors and a sophomore. But we slowed plans and we was regional champions. We were second in the conference regional champions and we was third in the state but that our testimony set those for the sophomores to be when they became seniors two years later to win the whole thing to win the state track meet so if you did today i hope may god bless you and i hope that this be an encouragement to someone else may god bless mm -hmm.